people need to not be afraid to try things, right? Just because it says AI, yes, it could be scary to some, but um, don't be afraid. You know, uh, it, it, the benefits, depending on what it is, the benefits could outweigh the, the fear factor, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest looking for tools that are similar to what you're doing now, potentially, that may already have AI integrations that could benefit you and save you time or money. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Wisdom in the Tangents podcast, uh, episode 215. I've got uh, Scott Wyden-Kivowitz on the show today. He is the community manager and podcast host over at Imagine AI. Their podcast is Workflows. It is really great. Uh, you should definitely check it out after today's episode. Y'all know that I love Imagine AI. I've talked about them a few times. You've probably heard their uh, sponsor ad uh, quite a bit as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, really imagine is, uh, one of the reasons that my photography business has stayed, uh, going, uh, as I have kind of taken on the, uh, the role of stay at home parent and, uh, and really parenting, like I, it is summer right now and the kids are at home. They're on the other side of this door right here. And uh, yeah, without uh, being able to use Imagine, uh, I don't, it would just be a lot of late nights editing photos. Uh, so very happy about working with them. Very happy to have Scott on the show. And uh, this is a really great conversation about AI, how we can use it in our lives, how we've kind of already used it in uh, a lot of different ways. And um, yeah, just how we can implement that into workflow and just make life more simple. So let's get into my conversation with Scott. I'm very excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. Yeah, well, thank you for, for having me on. I'm, I'm also very excited to for this discussion. It's something I have uh, always loved talking about. So um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, uh, surprise some people or um, blow their minds with things they didn't realize they were already doing <laughs> as we get as we get into this conversation. So yes, we'll see what yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, I I am expecting some people just be like, wait, that's AI. I didn't know that <laughs> um, because there, I have learned so much about AI over the past year, eighteen months that it's really been like in. Uh, I don't know, in the zeitgeist, people talking about it mm -hmm. more and not just like a Will Smith movie from 2002 or whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh no, that one's iRobot. AI. iRobot was a Joel good Osmond. movie though. iRobot was good. And that was also AI. Yeah. But yeah, Haley Joel Osment, Jude Law, mm -hmm. that one was even earlier than that. I don't you know. He was still a kid. Uh, but uh but yeah also a good movie i i enjoyed that one it was very strange uh and very long i remember i should probably watch ai again um but that's not the ai we're talking about today uh but um but before we get into like scott what you do uh and and where you're based all those kinds of things um i like to just ask a, like a, a random question and um and I had, oh, I had a question for you because uh, I saw on your profile that uh, you are into Gojiru uh, karate. Yes. Yeah. Uh, has there been something through your training with Gojiru that has like kind of shaped the way that like bringing it into your life or business or something mm. like a mindset or a practice or something from there? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the big parts of, of that is, um, the control. Um, so what I mean by that is as you progress in a traditional martial art and you, um, start really, sp you start sparring with people who are either better than you or not as good as you. And, um, they might do something that's like, why would you do that? Like, for example, in, in, in traditional martial arts, there's no MMA style fighting, right? Um, right. And there are times where somebody I might be sparring who may not be experienced enough where they might throw something that is not in our style, that is not 
something they should be doing and in, inspiring in our in our school they should be doing that in an, in an mma school um and it's so easy to lose your cool um and you've got to have the control to 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 stay level-headed and um show them the proper way of doing things in our school right again every school is different right. uh and i think that also comes to business whether it's um photography business or whether it's where i am at imagine um where there's always gonna be people talking smack <laughs> right mm -hmm. one way or another oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. you got to have the control to to not respond in a way that um uh makes you look as bad as it's as they're looking basically yeah. um yeah you know it, unfortunately there are people in in business that don't view competition as a healthy thing um so um if you're if you're if you're a photographer uh, my advice to those listening is if you're a photographer and there's somebody in your area who is attacking your business because maybe you're uh more expensive than they are and you know they know you're making more more money than them <laughs> and uh maybe they're they're jealous in that sense and they so they come at you and say yeah well i'm cheaper and that person's just charging more because whatever, you know, let it go over the shoulder. Um, you, there's a place for you uh, in, in your market. There's a place for them in your market. I mean, I'm, I'm in a place where I am in New Jersey where, um, so I don't photograph weddings. I take one wedding a year just to keep in it, but it's always a very special wedding. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I can explain what I mean in a little bit if, you, if you're curious what I mean by that. But um, I, I, I mainly do families. Uh, I used to do headshots a lot. Um, and pr predominantly now it's, it's um, pr uh, proposals, surprise proposals. And, oh, nice. um, but like when it comes to families, there's, there's photographers in my area doing $100 photo sessions for families. Like no joke, it's 2024 and they're still doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, don't, don't, try to, don't try to take... Um, don't try to stoop to where they are just because stay, stick your ground and keep control over yourself. So mm -hmm. that's my advice. Yeah. And that is great advice. That is something that is um, definitely a learned discipline. Definitely something that um, it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people because it mm -hmm. is like that, you know, especially if someone's attacking you or, or, or talking you know, behind your back to other people about like, Oh, well, they're too expensive or, yeah, what are what are they even doing with those prisms and stuff? Like that's that's not photography. That's like playing with toys and whatever, and like different things that you know I've heard through the industry, and yeah. Um, and yeah, it is. It's very easy to become defensive and just be like, well, no, but I'm doing this, or you know, this is the reason. You know, I can I can list out twenty five different bullet points of why I charge what I charge, and instead. Uh, like that, that ability to have that self-control and just like something that I always ask myself is like, if I get upset about this, if I like fight back about this, is it going to change anything? Like, is it going to be better for me, better for them, better for anyone else? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Then I'm not going to do that. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm just going to like, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Their, their words don't hold value. Uh, so just kind of moving on. Um, yeah. and yeah, I, I think that's, that's great. So yeah, I'm glad I, I was like, I don't know if this is going to be a good question or not, but I was curious and, uh, yeah, it, that yeah. was, that was great. I mean, I, the, the, the interesting thing is I could talk about this for, for, for days and days and days, um, before I joined the school. So I joined the school, unfortunately, my progression got delayed between two different surgeries and, uh, oh. um, unrelated to karate. <laughs> and um and uh the pandemic pushed me back oh, yeah. big time right that's three years oh, yeah. of delay basically um i'm i'm on the cusp of of black belt i should have been a black belt about three years ago um okay but um before i even joined i had the the original um creator of the school who started the school in the early 70s um i photographed before he passed he wrote his second book and he asked me to, uh, he hired me to, to photograph his book, 20,000 photos, guys, very meticulous, um, 20,000 photos shot all tethered for the book. Um, not all were used, but like he, we were to call it down yeah. for what he needed. 
Um, it went from 20,000 probably down to about 700 in the end, somewhere around there. Um, okay. But you're talking like he wanted a hand to be here versus here, yeah, right? Like just it was like, like that minor slight thing. angle difference. And, yeah. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Man, that's, so that's that the meticulous aspect. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, you know, during the process of, of doing this, the photographs, and I was blogging heavily and teaching, you know, while um, I actually said to him, hey, can we do a – ebook together where I look, I take a photo from the sessions from all these mm -hmm. sessions and I write, you, you tell me about it from the karate standpoint and I write about it from the photography standpoint. Um, and so we put a whole ebook together. I don't have it available anymore. I took it off, off my website, but um, it's a whole ebook about the lessons learned from karate to photography, which at the time I was not a practicing karate at all. But right. then I joined the school. Oh, after, so oh, okay. Yeah. That was before you even joined. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So he he that actually is... wrote the karate part, and I yeah. wrote the the photography part. That is really yep. cool. I yep. love that. I love the um, the intermingling of just like everyday life of other things, and then incorporating that into your uh, photography, into your business, all of that. Yeah. I feel like that is. Um, I have I've trained myself to do that so much now that it's almost a little bit annoying where I'm just like walking down the street and then I'll see something like, oh, that's really good marketing for this. And like the way that they use this phrase and like that yeah. caught my eye and I can do this and, uh, you know, or, you know, with photography and just like seeing light everywhere. And just, yep. oh, man, I would love to just like put someone in the corner over here with that window shade. And uh, yeah, it is. Um, that's really cool. That's a very interesting. Uh, I, I'm glad that he said yes about that too. Uh, oh yeah, about collabing on that ebook. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that. I mean, that's awesome. That, like you, you shot your shot, and it was like, okay. So I'm. I would be surprised if he says yes, but like, this is a big thing when yeah. you do this because you could have easily just been like, he's probably not going to say yes you know he's yeah you know writing this book and twenty thousand frames and like this is a big deal and who am i and yep. and all that but like so, i mean the, the the only the only uh stipulation was it i couldn't charge for it so it was free okay. that was it. yeah yeah he didn't want he didn't want me to make money off of his stuff from that standpoint so i was like all right understandable. No, yeah. so <laughs> yeah that's cool that's cool um <laughs> Awesome. Okay, Scott, I know we've we've already yeah. dove in. Um, tell us a little bit about you, uh, where you're based, what you yeah. do, all that. We kind of like touched a little bit on photography. You mentioned Imagine. Um, yep. What all do you do? Yeah, yeah. So so um, I've been a photographer since the early 2000s. Um, <laughs> went to college for it. Um, and uh, my entire life basically um, brought me to Imagine. Like I feel like everything I've done in life has to get me where I am right now. Um, but I've been I've been professional photographer since the early 2000s, as I mentioned, fa photographing families, headshots. Uh, I've done cake smashes. More recently, um, during the pandemic, it, my business uh, organically shifted to proposals. It was a very strange shift, but it worked out for the best. Um, I'm very particular about what clients to take on because I have mm -hmm. the um, I have a full time job at Imagine, and I am the community manager. I also um, host our podcast at Imagine. Um, so I don't need to take on photography work, but I still want to. I still love to do it. So yeah. I still do it. Um, I'm just picky <laughs> about what I take. And <laughs> what I don't want to take, I refer to friends, which is a nice ability, you know, to be able to do that is a very cool thing. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. Um, father of two, uh, husband of one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I no, I love that, like, you're at a place where you can – you can pick and choose. I know a lot of people are just like, yeah. any lead that comes in, I will, I will do this. Whatever, whatever mm -hmm. you're needing, you're gonna pay me. I will, I will take photos. And um, and there's like a certain point in your business where you're getting so many leads that you can start saying no and kind of being mm -hmm. picky and choosy. Um, and like I like that. I mean, you mentioned earlier you you shoot like one wedding a year. And it's yep. got to be something special, something, something different. And yep. uh, 
yeah, I, I don't know. I like that it is, it's something that 10 years ago, John, couldn't imagine being at a place where I would be like, hmm, I don't think we're a good fit. Uh, I'm going to send you over to so-and-so that does, yeah. you know, more editorial style stuff. And like, yeah. she's going to be amazing. And you're going to yeah. enjoy your photos more with her than me. And, you know, 10 years ago, I was just like, I just need anyone, anyone with, yeah. with, uh, yeah. with money who needs photos. I will take them. Yeah, I, I'm also in the position where like I'm even looking at my schedule for the week and okay, if I'm doing four days of of podcast recordings, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Um and I've got meetings back to back to back all during the week as well. Do I want to take this job on the weekend after I've been so you know, conversational and so on yeah. every single day? Or do I want to just pass on it, refer to a friend, and I'll take the next one potentially? Yeah. So like there's so many different uh, factors that go in right now of what do I take and why. Um, and, you know, either way, whether I'm taking it or whether a friend's taking it, someone's winning. <laughs> so yeah. it's good. Exactly. Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. And it's, it's great to have that community and that networking where you yeah. can refer those to people and not just be like, oh, nope, sorry, I'm booked. And then just yeah. leave them at that. You're still like, yeah. serving these leads that are coming in by yeah. leading yeah. them on to uh, your friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it makes you look good for your photography business if you're basically turning down a potential job, yeah. but at the same time referring to somebody who's potentially local to, to where the client is or where the job might be and, um, and you know, still – help them out in the end so yeah yeah and the the lead also feels like it's it's like reading you know five star reviews it's that uh that referral of oh scott said that this person is good so i wanted to hire scott he's not able to to take me right now i'm going to trust in his judgment that this other person is going to do well and yeah it's just it's it's a it's a win-win all around mm -hmm. for, for everyone yep. involved. So uh, totally. I love it. Uh, okay. I, I really want to get into to AI. I, I uh, sure. am, am very interested in all of this. And I know I'm sure that you hear this all the time, just like misconceptions about AI yep. where people are just like, oh, well, this is, you know, AI can't do this or it's yep. doing this thing or it's going to, you know, ruin the photography industry. Um, <laughs> What are some misconceptions that you hear yeah. uh, pretty often being, you know, community manager at MSAI? Yeah. I think there's the three, there's three very, very, very common ones. The first being that it's not secure, mm -hmm. right? That's not all photographers um, care about security in, in <laughs> deep levels, high levels, whatever you might want to call it. But there are some genres, of course, that, care about it more than other genres right yeah. um so uh the first one for sure is that it's not secure and i think um yeah, of course it like any ai right so we're talking about ai in general it depends on what ai you're using okay um mm -hmm. there are going to be ais that are training the algorithm overall right there's there's ai that is going to be whatever you do will be used to train another person's work right um that's not the case i'd imagine but yeah again we're talking ai in general um yeah. i would say the second is that it's going to take our jobs this is probably something that we hear quite often and imagine but it's something that um we see in all aspects i mean look at the screenwriters guilds went on strike for quite some time yeah. because ai they were worried that AI is going to take all the writers, writers jobs. Sure. It might still in the future. You never know. Anything's possible. I doubt it will. I doubt mm. it will for that. I doubt it will for photographers. Yes. There will be some photographers that, um, it will take some jobs from, right. There are some genres that are more at risk than others, mm. but there are some genres where it could help where others can't. So here's a good, a good example of both. Um, headshot photographers, probably the most at risk for their jobs being taken. I don't think it will 100%. I really don't. There's still going to be people who want a human to do the work, 
right? Yeah. Um, but I do think there will be a lot of people who will just say, oh, I can take these photos from my phone, throw them into AI, and now I have my headshots. Mm -hmm. right? um, yeah. So I think we'll see both in, in the future for that um, more, he more, more heavily. But on the side yeah. that it definitely won't, wedding photographers are safe. Event photographers are safe. And here's why, because there, yes, there are services that you can drop in the a photo of a bride and groom, and it will literally create a wedding out of it with AI, right? Mm -hmm. But most brides and grooms are not going to do that. The ones that will do that are the ones that physically or financially could not have a real wedding, right? right? So yeah. you're talking two people who are maybe extremely disabled. There was no wedding venue in town to have a accessible wedding, which is wrong in itself. But right. hypothetically, that's the situation. They couldn't physically have a real wedding, you know, uh, in person type of situation with guests. So instead, they threw everything into AI, and now they have a wedding that they can um, do or or they couldn't afford a wedding, and they did a church uh, uh, a church a um, uh, courthouse thing because they mm -hmm. could not afford mm -hmm. anything else but they wanted to have a you know traditional wedding virtually so they yeah. did it with ai right yeah so there's going to be yeah, some but, but i don't think it's going to replace wedding photographers at all i agree yeah i i think like to your point for both of those it's kind of mm -hmm. like the uh the very bottom of the the market like below mm -hmm. budget it's just like they probably weren't going to hire a photographer anyway because there are right. you know, thousands of weddings happening every day that they don't hire a photographer because either yep. you know budget wise or it's just not a priority to them which my yep. mind doesn't understand because i'm a photographer i'm like how can that not be a priority <laughs> but like there are people that just that is not a priority mm -hmm. and they're like yeah we're just we're gonna yeah. live in the moment and we'll remember this it's cool and uh and the same with like headshots i feel like the the headshot photographers that that would take out would be the ones who uh you know the the people who are are just like maybe i'll just take a selfie and use this as a headshot for yep. whatever i need for my job or something like that or you know they're they're hiring you know someone off of craigslist for 15 dollars or something like that yeah and that they would just be like, oh yeah, I have these these selfies. I can just throw them into AI generator. Boom! I have these uh, these headshots, and maybe I have to crop my hands out of it because I have seven fingers. But uh, you know, <laughs> yep. it looks enough like me. It's gonna yeah. work for what I what I need. And yeah. they're not looking for that experience. And I think that's yeah. the thing that people forget about whenever they're talking about you know AI taking our jobs is. Yeah you bring that human experience you bring your brand your client experience to the table that uh throwing a, a couple photos into an ai image generator to generate a photo of a couple you know mountainside in colorado when they got married at a courthouse um, you're going to give that experience of Oh yeah, I know the best place to go. I will wake up at three a.m. with you and hike to this place, and you know, take the photos. And like, that's a whole experience that yep. cannot be replicated. And you're, yeah, you're not going to lose. Yep. Have you ever learned something that you feel like you learned way too late in life? I feel like that guy from Instagram who's like, "Here's something I didn't know until my thirties," because. Here is something I didn't know until I was in my 30s. Your savings account can actually make you money. And I'm not talking about like traditional savings accounts that are making you like 0.01 to 0.3% interest, just pennies. That's pennies, people. I'm talking 1.5 to over 4% interest. That doesn't sound like much, but if you're talking numbers, let's say you have like $5,000 in your savings account for taxes at the end of the year, that's the difference between accruing $15 and $200 extra dollars. Now, this is a high yield savings account. I've talked about these a few times on the podcast, but now I have partnered with SoFi to bring you a little extra money. Whenever you start your free high yield savings account through SoFi, they will deposit an extra $25 in there for you for free. That's 
literally free money. And yes, this high yield savings account is just like a normal savings account where you can access your money. You don't have to like wait for seven to 10 business days until you can get anything out. It's a normal savings account, except you're making more money. So go to allheartphoto.com slash SoFi. That's allheartphoto.com slash SOFI and let your money make you money. I do think there's one more um, miscon mis misconception that uh, is borderline scary, Ooh. but also very unlikely to actually happen, um, is that AI will destroy all life as we know it. Which, yes, Terminator, Yeah, we've all seen it. We've, Fantastic we've seen movie. the movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think... Yes, there is a, there is a chance we, that we could as humans code AI to do that. But I think we are smart enough to put um, the proper measures in place to prevent it. And I think that's where open AI is working on now. Cause like they, they haven't dropped chat GPT five yet. And I think the reason why is because it is getting closer and closer to real human processes and they need yeah. to put the proper blockers in place to uh, prevent right. malicious stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like, what was it? Was it Yahoo? Uh, their their AI bot uh, like started to become sentient where it was like falling in love with people and mm. just like, I just, I, I want to be with you. And he's like, oh, yeah. I am just asking you how many <laughs> tablespoons are in four ounces. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> which is how I use are like Siri and just like, wait, right. how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon again? I know we have this chart somewhere in the kitchen, but I can never remember. Um, I think it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I it, that's definitely a, um, a, a misconception that I hear a ton is like, yeah. I've seen the movies. I know how this ends. We need to stop playing with this. And yep. yeah, I think, uh, I think people are smarter than we, give them credit for uh the people that are putting this together definitely smarter than yeah. me uh so uh, <laughs> yeah with with this ai with mm -hmm. with these things once we get past the misconceptions how can we use ai in our lives in our businesses yeah um so ai for the most part ai as we know it is mainly machine learning right it's it's um mm -hmm. the computer computer processes where it's learning from itself and all of its data and just gets better and better and better uses more data. Um, so with that said, um, you know, we, we are using it already, um, in our photography businesses, in our lives on a, on an ongoing basis, some of which we know, some of which we may not know. So a good example is, um, TTL. How long have you been using TTL? Oh, in yeah. your strobes. Oh yeah, years. So, so, so like from the beginning, because I was like, this is easy. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much like auto. Yeah. I don't have to think about like manually right. setting my flashes. And yeah, yeah. So that's that's machine learning. Like that's it's not AI as like imagine, right? But it's machine right. learning. It is your camera using real time data, talking to your flash, talking back to your camera, saying, okay. You guys are communicating. I can see how far away the flash is. I can see how, you know, what what lens you're using, what your aperture is, what your ISO is, and here's what the flash needs to fire at based on all these different data points. Machine learning, right? Uh -huh. um, so we're already using that in our lives, and we have been for far longer than the term AI has been trending in in the world, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that's one. Um, I mean, think about autofocus, right? Again. Um, Autofocus pre mirrorless cameras was more hardware based than software based. Um, autofocus now is predominantly software based yeah. and it's using eyes and faces and mm -hmm. animal faces or animal eyes or cars driving by or airplanes over the sky. It's using and detecting all these different objects and things to pinpoint what is what to autofocus on um or in some cameras in some cases using your eye 
and where you look through the EVF to determine where to focus. Oh yeah. Right. That's uh, AI. Yeah. That's machine learning. <laughs> um, so there's those. Um, of course, the most popular these days is ChatGPT and Gemini. Google, mm -hmm. it was called Bard, then they renamed it to Gemini, much better name. Um, uh, yes. So like, you know, so many of us are using that in our lives and in our businesses already. Some maybe just a tiny bit, but I think, you know, we're going to see um, more and more adoption with this. Uh, I mean, even uh, Apple is is probably in iOS 18, we're going to see more of a chat GPT style thing um, in, included into Siri of some sort, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I even um, noticed uh, this week, I don't know if it's a new release or anything. I don't keep up to date. Like, I don't follow mm -hmm. Adam, what's his name? Mor Morosi or something, the Instagram CEO. But, like, the whenever I went to go search something on Instagram, like the Explore page, it came up with mm -hmm. the Meta AI. Meta AI, so you can, yeah. You can type into uh, AI there. Uh, I, I don't really know. I haven't played around with that, but I saw that um, earlier this week, and I was like, "Oh, yeah!" And like they're integrating AI into our yeah. social media more, because yep. uh, like algorithm is also machine learning of like yep. how long are you even just like hovering and looking at this photo. Yeah. All right. Like yep. how many seconds are you watching this reel? Like, should I show you another reel from this creator or in the same genre? And it's like, it is constantly learning and figuring yeah. out what to send you next to keep you there because they just want you to stay on your phone all day, which makes yep. sense in a business standpoint, but is yep. very detrimental to my life. <laughs> yeah. In fact, like YouTube um, for, you know, I'm, I, I know not everybody's been familiar with being a YouTuber and creating YouTube mm -hmm. content, but at least from the viewing standpoint, uh, more people are familiar with. Um, for years, you, uh, Google has been saying YouTube does not have an algorithm. It's not an algorithm to determine how to rank and how to get your video shown to people. Mm -hmm. YouTube's algorithm is AI, and it is learning from everybody's um, behaviors on YouTube to push them more content that they're going more likely to consume. Yeah. So, you know, that's another area that uh, I'd even have on my list, but I'm glad you brought up the meta AI, but <laughs> because that is another area that, um, that has been in our lives for a long time. You know, Google has owned YouTube for years and years at this point. And mm -hmm. this, this AI has been part of their, um, the, the YouTube SEO, whatever you want to call it for a long time. Um, so, but then there's some yeah. new ones, pick time, pick time added, uh, people search using AI and yeah. gallery creation using AI. So you can send your gallery to the guests with, and you know, it'll already have the faces detected, but then your guests can go in and say, um, you know, this is me, but I also want to, so I'm, I'm the, the father of the bride, let's say, and mm -hmm. I want a picture with me and my daughter. As, at its own gallery and then the it's all done it's all ai doing it for you instead of you yeah. having to do it as a photographer yeah which is great because getting those <laughs> uh requests i'm like oh, i delivered like 900 photos now i have to go through <laughs> find each yeah. one and yeah that yeah. is uh it is amazing the like yep. in and even um and even doing that for other vendors and just being like yeah all of the floral details just like type that in and then it just yep. filters through. Now we have all of the floral details in one gallery and I can send it off to the florist and they don't have to cipher through and see which ones they want to use. And you know, all of the, yep. all, all the, the more storytelling photos that are maybe not as useful to them. And uh, yeah, no, it is uh, that I hadn't thought about that one either. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so many more, of course, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to talk about this stuff. I love it. <laughs> oh yeah. So like having these already that we are most likely using in, in yeah. our day to day, um, what are some steps that people can use to maybe incorporate more, uh, intentionally AI into their lives and business more than just like, uh, 
you know, using you know, like a, a Siri or, or using chat GPT, uh, or maybe even some strategic ways to use those devices in, in AI that we're currently already using, but more yeah. strategic in the business. Yeah. Um, well, so first of all, um, I think people need to not be afraid to try things, right? And just because it says AI, yes, it could be scary to some, but um, don't be afraid. You know, uh, it, it, the benefits, depending on what it is, the benefits could outweigh the, the fear factor, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest looking for tools that are similar to what you're doing now, potentially, that may already have AI integrations that could benefit you and save you time or money. Um, a good example being, I already brought up PickTime, right? So PickTime has their AI, which are smart yeah. AI tools that they have built specifically for their platform that are helpful for you, the photographer, and your clients. But they also deeply integrated with HoneyBook, who has their own AI tools. So think about mm -hmm. this. You have PickTime, and then you're using XYZ CRM, email marketing platform that does not integrate with PickTime. You could literally set up a trial of PickTime and connect it to Pick. I mean, sorry, set up a trial of HoneyBook, connect it to PickTime, and now you've got this deep integration with a CRM and email marketing that can do all these automation automated workflows. Yes, and PickTime has their own email marketing as well, um, but like you've got this deep integration, and HoneyBook has their own AI that actually does smart analysis of your leads using artificial intelligence. So. Yeah. Um, like that's an area that could potentially save you time and, e and energy um, to replace something you're already using, but just with a tool that is more modernized, right? Um, uh -huh. uh, of, of course, there's also tools like Imagine, right? So Imagine can save you time and we can um, talk about talk about Imagine whatever you want to talk about it. But yeah. you know, that's another area that can help you in a variety of aspects of your post-production as well. Um, yeah. Could you give us a little, I mean, uh, the listeners know, uh, imagine I talk about y'all all the time, um, but like, could you give us a little uh, rundown for maybe anyone who this is their first episode listening and they're just like, you've mentioned yeah. Imagine a couple times. I don't know what this is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Imagine is um, an AI based um, post-production workflow assistant, basically. So our app as a standalone app that can either speak with Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC on the local side, um, Adobe Bridge, and also Adobe ACR inside of Photoshop. Um, and basically what we do is we can do um, AI culling for your photos. So you can photograph a whole wedding, <clears throat> upload it to Imagine, and our servers will do all the heavy lifting. Um, and coming out very soon, very, very soon is a, a whole new upgrade to our calling system called Calling Studio, which I'm very excited about. First teaser mm -hmm. is actually in the Imagine community today. <laughs> oh, um, nice. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and uh, and also what we started, when how Imagine started in 2020 is actually with AI editing. So we learn how photographers edit using the Adobe, um, the ACR ecosystem. So no matter mm -hmm. what Adobe product you're using to edit your photos, we can learn from that. And then once a profile is made, what we call an AI profile, we can then edit for you, like you, in record, record speeds. Um, so you can go from calling to editing uh, a full wedding in less than 20 minutes um, oh, yeah. when all that is said and done. Um, yeah. But we also My offer... favorite thing is just like in the morning, yeah. uh, just uploading a gallery to go mm -hmm. edit, and then I will go make coffee. And then by the time <laughs> I have my coffee, I'm walking back, it's just like I already got the little notification on my phone of like hey your gallery is yeah. ready and I'm like this yeah. is amazing this is great <laughs> yeah yeah it is it's 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 you know it, so we've got built-in profiles which are which are really great mm -hmm. to use if you don't have an editing style already or if you're not you know very confident in your editing capabilities or whatever um yeah. but like the real magic happens when it learns from you and you see us edit just like you would have and you're and that's that like mind-blowing moment of this actually works you know it's one thing to edit like somebody else but it's another thing yes. to edit see it edit like you um yes. so I, the, the the third yeah go oh ahead. no yeah no no go, go, go ahead i was just gonna i was gonna sing some more phrases it's cool <laughs> um the third I, thing I, that I imagine does um and there's so much more to come from, from imagine but the third thing that we do um 
which we lost a, launched about a year ago is cloud backups. So in addition to calling and editing, during that process of you setting to Imagine, um, you have an optional ability to have us back up your original RAWs. And if you do that, if you if you opt for that um, that feature, we're also actually backing up your editing. So we're the first and only real, true um, backup solution designed for photographers because we're backing up either your entire cold project or mm -hmm. just what you send to edit. And if you have to recover, you're recovering it with your editing in place um, yeah. in, in, is instead of just your raw files. Yes, so. that has happened thankfully only once <laughs> where I like had some hardware or hard drive issues and had to recover. Yeah. Uh, from the mm -hmm. cloud, and then I was like, okay, well now I've lost all of my edits, and I have to start over from like ground zero, yeah, first block, and and go through, um, which you know added hours and hours because at that time I was still hand editing every single image, uh, and yeah, it's one of one of the things that has really sold me on Imagine and like kept me around was how uh like you said like it it learns from your editing style to edit like you instead yeah. of like i've used human editors before which are great and mm -hmm. uh but there were times where it came back just to, like is a little bit different and i was like yeah this doesn't really look like me maybe it was like a little bit more bright and airy and i'm not bright and airy and i would have to go through and do tweaks and like send in uh the tweaks that i did and then they would have to learn from that and then maybe it didn't really change the next time and i have to do that again uh, and i do like that you know for for the first few galleries it was really like that that learning curve of mm -hmm. okay this is this is what you've told us does this look good and i was like yeah this looks pretty good and then i would do any tweaks upload it um and then it learns like fine tunes from there uh and just like the the way that I'll, I'll I'll just receive the photos back, and then some of them like I wouldn't have even done that. That looks better than what I would have edited. <laughs> okay, this is great. <laughs> like I don't have yeah. to do like really any any tweaks unless I'm doing like some crazy you know demo exposure artsy yeah. stuff. But uh, but yeah, no, I yeah. just wanted to to share that uh, with you and with the the listeners uh, uh, just about that learning process with Imagine. yeah yeah even though it's ai there is that sort of human element to it where mm -hmm. you know depending on how what it was trained on like you know you're human you're inconsistent ai is oh, yeah. almost perfect it still can make mistakes but it, it, it still has to learn from what it learns from you so if you're inconsistent it can produce inconsistency so it just has to get better and better and better and yeah, you know, sometimes it's one fine tune and it's perfect. Sometimes it takes people three fine tunes and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. I actually, whenever I first started with y'all, I had an old laptop that the uh, the screen had started to. Uh, it, it wasn't very accurate with the colors, but I didn't know that because mm -hmm. it was like it was like the you know the frog in the boiling water. It was just like over an eight year period got worse and worse but it still looked fine to me because it was a slow progression and mm -hmm. i was uh i was editing on that and then sending to an old imagine profile that i don't use anymore and i would get them back and they looked great on my computer and then like uploading them sending them to the client to my phone everything was like a little bit green and i figured out it was actually my computer and then i was like oh I'm just gonna like that was that was my mistake, but imagine was still like this is what you want. I will I will give you these green photos. It is yeah. cool. This is what you have uploaded. I will <laughs> I will send it right back to you. Um, and now I have a whole different profile, which looks amazing on all the different screens, and I have a new computer. It's cool. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, could you give us like maybe a couple last tips about uh, or or anything? You kind of want to like wrap us up with about mm -hmm. AI and incorporating that into our lives. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm I'm going to assume, even though I should never assume, that um, most photographers are using Google Workspace for their emails, right? For their domains, mm -hmm. right? So 
in theory, you're basically using Gmail with your own domain on it. If you are, um, consider using their AI features to um, autocomplete emails for you and things like that. Um, it's it's not going to fully write for you, but there's little things that it does in their smart compose or whatever they call that feature to help you finish writing emails faster. So um, if I'm if I'm writing, you know, hey John, mm -hmm. it's going to suggest your name, and all I have to do is hit tab, and it fills in the words, and then I hit enter, and then it's um, I can say I hope you're having a, and then it'll say a great weekend hit tab. And I, it wrote, I don't, you know, like those little bits, yeah. those seconds of, of, of typing savings add up. Um, so when I said like, don't be, a, don't try not to be afraid of everything. There are some free things. If you're ready using Gmail, this is, this is available to you. There are some free things that you could just turn on that will save you that little bit of time um, mm -hmm. that just add up. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, there's like, there's, there's so many things that, that we could talk about. Um, I know. Yeah. We could go on it. for another hour and a half <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and something that just like popped in my head with you talking about how like there, there are these free things. There's, there's yeah. easy ways that we could, you, you could just be like, see that, like, do you want to say, Hey John? And just be like, I'm just going to type it. And like, yeah. like, this is how I've always done it. I'm just going to do this. It's cool. I can type my own emails. I know it's going to take this long or whatever the AI that you have out there at your access. Uh, like there's always going to be that learning curve at the beginning of trying something new. Any new tool out there, it, you know, even whenever we went, like I went from dating myself now, but like going from paper contracts to having a digital contract in my CRM, like that was a learning curve because I was like, yeah. okay, I gotta transpose all of this and put it in here and make sure that this is legal and whatever. And like all of that, I could have said, no, paper's good. I'll just mail it to them. They can sign it, mail it back. I'll scan it in the computer and like go through this whole process that takes like two weeks. Um, or you can go through that little bit of a learning curve where you're trying something new, you're implementing a new tool, and then the amount of time that it saves you is like that uh, that zero point of like amount of time spent learning this to the amount of time that it saves you it, with, mm -hmm. with a lot of these AI tools is going to be pretty soon. And then you're yeah. just going to be receiving all of this like free time, which, uh, is, is the one resource we can't really create, but in a way we can kind of create it. Like I have a lot of different uh, AI tools and, uh, oh, what is the word? I wanted to say allegory. That is definitely not it. It's an A word um, of uh, automations. There you go. Uh, like I have these automations set up in my business to where I don't have to be repeating and yeah. doing the same thing over and over again yeah. and it's automated in a way that it is uh like me how i'm doing it but then i can focus yep. on other things to yeah. scale the business or to play golden eye 007 that i recently <laughs> got for my nintendo it's 64 about call of duty it's all about call, it's <laughs> call of duty yeah oh man the new one um yeah. but like yeah. but yeah like it's the these are tools that it may take a little bit to learn and it may spend take a little bit extra yeah. of your time to get the tool down but then once yeah. you have this under your belt it is just you're you're reaping extra time more hours yeah um i actually have one more um tool that i want to recommend to photographer actually it's technically it's two two options um but okay. the, at the end of the day they can do the same thing um so there's two tools that will help photographers when they have their initial meeting, whether in person or virtually, um, or they're doing their IPS calls or in person, mm -hmm. right? Physically or virtually again. Yeah. The two tools I would recommend, one is Cast Magic. Okay, so Cast Magic actually came out for podcasts originally. 
but yeah. they're starting to expand to YouTube videos and to call recordings and things like that, where you have these basically um, unlimited amounts of prompts that you can save for each um, recording space. So I have a recording space for the Workflows Photography Podcast. Um, I have a space for the Imagine YouTube channel for my own stuff, for my client calls, whatever it might be. And you can have different prompts for different spaces. And if I record a call for my phone, mm -hmm. it immediately goes into Cast Magic. I can open it up on the computer and um, basically I can do one of two things. One, copy and paste from any of the results from any of the prompts that I have pre-made. So let's say it's an IPS call. It's like, okay, what is what were the the album pages that they picked out? Just, you know, just to summarize in case you forgot something or like what mm -hmm. were some takeaways that you, you know, basically it's a note taker without you physically taking notes. Um, and so that way you can just focus on that face-to-face -face engagement instead of having to be there with a notepad and or an iPad and writing stuff. Right. Let it record and then just give you. The other part of Ooh. Cast Magic is also having a chat GPT style chat discussion. So you say, you know, if there's not something you need on a regular basis in the prompt, you can come up with a prompt on the fly and say, from this recording, what was this? And gives you that. Um, so that's, that's Cast cool. Magic. Okay. I use it for everything. Um, yeah, but that sounds like a great There's tool. a new tool that I'm currently testing called Voice Notes. It's actually voicenotes.com. Very easy to remember. Um, yeah. And right now, I don't know how much it went up, but they had a $50 once forever price. <laughs> <laughs> that that I bought in on because I was like, okay, <laughs> if you know, it's a cool price. Um, and it's yeah. a similar way, except it's not saved prompts. It's just it records it, and then you chat with it to get what you need. Um, so it's like a simpler version of Cast Magic. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, you can have an in-person thing. Open up and open it up on your app on your phone. Hit record and just have your call, and then or your your meeting, and then um. Again, not take notes. Let it take notes for you, basically. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Cool. Cast. Wait. Cast magic. Okay. Yep. And uh, voice notes. Voice notes. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. I'm going to have links to both of those in the show notes for everyone. Uh, and I am going to go check them out as soon as we finish this conversation because those sound <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well cool well scott this has been great um I, I i really enjoyed this conversation before we kind of get into where people can follow you listen to your podcasts mm -hmm. all of that um there's part of the show that i like to do where we talk about what we're loving this week it could be mm -hmm. literally anything new you know, book tv show movie whatever um what are you loving this week okay i got i got two for you um okay cool so one um actually i got three for you <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, bring them. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so one is um so my wife and I um used to watch This Is Us. Right? That was very popular yes. on TV for quite some time. Um uh -huh. one of the actors who was on um well oh, man, which uh he was on He was the Green Arrow in one of the shows. This is like one oh. of the Superman shows or something a while back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, it was not. It was. It was name. not the recent Green Arrow. It was the one before the it. Old, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So the actor from This Is Us was also the okay. Green Arrow, one of the Superman shows. Um, he has a new show called Tracker, and it's basically yeah. like, it's so good. It's so good. I love it. So that's one thing I I've been binging binging that. Um, okay, I have heard good things am, about it. Um, yeah. But I have not. I don't. I don't know if I'm just like in a different um, like ad uh, algorithm right now. But I, <laughs> I haven't seen any trailers, any ads, or anything for Tracker. I just hear people talking about it. So, um, but it sounds cool. Uh, so it is. It's good. Check that out. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a very fit person. So in he fits this like outdoorsy uh, Tracker persona pretty well. Um, yeah. So. Um, okay, the other cool. thing I, I happen to have one in front of me is House of Macadamia. Ooh. So it's an entire like um, energy bar or or eh, I got Ooh. another one or raw raw nice. macadamia nuts um, that okay just they're they're so good um, like different flavors is that one, different flavors the blue one yeah, like so, a coconut something yeah so this the blue one's a um, chocolate coconut and then these are mm. just um, just sea salt but 
I mean, there's chili and all sorts of different good flavors. So that's another thing. Um, okay. And I know I just talked about recording meetings, but this one is like sort of the anti of that. So okay. <laughs> the weather's now nice. It's I'm in New Jersey. It's now 82 degrees outside. Most beautiful day we've had in weeks. Um, yeah. And my new thing is if I don't have to be on camera um, or like show my screen in a meeting, I am mm. throwing in my AirPods and I'm going for a long walk through the park while I have a meeting. Yeah. Just so fresh air, nice weather, um, and you can – you think better when you're moving. So, oh, yeah. um, so that's, that's my new thing that um, I started doing now that the weather's starting to get nicer and nicer. And I plan on continuing as long as I possibly can until the snow comes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that is great. I, I love uh, any, any days where the weather is nice. I'm just like, I just want to be outside the whole yeah. time. And, yeah. uh, and yeah, there's something about just like being out in nature and just like, you know, getting getting your feet in the grass and taking a walk and hearing the birds and just having getting some sun on your face. Yeah. While you're on a phone call, while you're in a meeting, while you're, you know, brainstorming some ideas for, you know, whatever you're doing. It's just like, yeah, I'm gonna do this outside instead of like sitting in this windowless office that I have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. But, My only window yeah. is way back, way back there. And it's, it's very small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I love all those. I'm definitely going to check out those uh, macadamia nuts because mm. those sound like a really great, just like little, little snack. Just, you know, have a bowl over here while I'm working. Uh, mm. Yep. There's something similar with just like the, some different flavored peanuts at a local, uh, yeah. local Texas uh, grocery store, H-E-B. They have some, and I really like the like the chili lemon ones that are just like they're the right amount of spice without it being like okay now it's burning, but yeah. it's just like it's enough yeah. spice to where it's got that little tingle. But then you have yeah. uh, the lime, and yeah, it's it's really good. Um, okay, let's see, what am I loving this week? Oh, I'm loving a a show. I think it's on Prime Video. Yeah, uh, it's on Prime. It's called Night Sky, okay. and I really had no idea what it was. I just saw um, it follows uh, uh, J.K. Simmons and Sissy Spacek, and they are just this older couple, and I like both of them uh, as as actors. So I was like, all right, cool. This sounds interesting. Uh, it looks interesting. It's like a sci-fi kind of movie. Or yeah. a TV I just show, pu- I just pulled it, it up. I just pulled it up okay. so I can. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna it's, I'm gonna add this to the list. Yeah, it's it's really good if you like sci-fi, but also drama, and a mm. little bit of. Well, I don't want to give away too much, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 really interesting. And like every couple episodes, there was a new little uh, twist or something else like mm. inserted into the story that was just like oh wait i thought i had this figured out and now this is happening i don't understand I love when that like happens. how it all comes together and yeah uh, yeah it's very interesting i hope that they have a season two because it did kind of leave us on a cliffhanger at the end of season one but uh but yeah very interesting show i liked that the main characters were uh were older actors uh because i think I think they're both probably, you know, 60s, 70s, uh, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. But, um, but yeah, very interesting show. It's on Prime, uh, Night Sky. So, cool. yeah, well, cool. Um, Scott, tell us where yeah. uh, the listeners can find you, where they can uh, follow along, listen to your podcasts, all those things. Yeah. So uh, my website is scottwyden.com. Um, I'm Scott Wyden everywhere. Um, and imagine is imagineai.com. And, uh, of course our podcast is called the workflows photography podcast, and that can be listened wherever you're listening to this one right now, <laughs> you can find that one. So, um, definitely check that out. Um, that's a great one. If you're looking for ways to improve your workflow from wherever mm-hmm. it is in your business, that's what our show is about. Awesome. 
Well, sweet. Yeah, I will have uh, links for everyone. You can go, uh, go follow Scott. Go check out the podcast and all that. Uh, but yeah, well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed getting to chat with you. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, this was a good one. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Wisdom and the Tangents podcast. As always, you can check out all the show notes at podcast.allheartphoto.com. Uh, today's episode was one, no, two fifteen. And even though Imagine AI was not the sponsor of today's episode, um, because I thought that'd be weird having Scott on and them being the sponsor. Uh, But you can still uh, go to our affiliate link. It's on our resources page. I'll also link it in the show notes. And uh, you can get 1,500 free edits uh, to your photos uh, for signing up. It's really great. I have edited, oh, I don't know, 25,000 ish somewhere around there. A lot of photos over the last, uh, probably year and a half, two years that I've been using them. So, um, really great. Uh, I loved, uh, this conversation with Scott. Definitely go check him out on socials and everything. Check out the workflows podcast. And next week I have Jenny pro on the show. She is a corporate transition coach, uh, out of the UK and it has a really great conversation. So, uh, tune in next week for episode 216. And until then, uh, if you are loving the show, please leave us a review. Those are amazing. Um, I read every single one. I try to share every single one. Uh, so definitely leave us a review on Apple podcasts is the most valuable place for us. Um, but also if you listen on Spotify, or overcast or anything like that give us a rating that is very helpful see y'all next week bye y'all